In today's video, I'm going to show you how to take book notes in Obsidian. Hey everyone, Matt Giaro here on this channel is for content creators who want to turn their ideas into an income. So if that sounds like you, hit the subscribe button now. So by using actually the workflow that I'm going to give you, you're going to see that this workflow is not only easy to implement, but it will also help increase your creativity and also the ability to recall information effectively. So just a quick disclaimer, this workflow is not the prettiest, it's not the best, but it at least will help you get started. And this is what everything is all about. So at least you know how to get started and then you can always tweak things around. And before digging deeper into the workflow, let me just draw your attention that you can get the free PDF by clicking the first link in the description that will give you three powerful tips to supercharge your note-taking workflow with Obsidian. With that being said, here are the three main stages for start taking great book notes with Obsidian. So the first phase is actually the reading phase. Well, so you are going to read actually the book and you're going to take notes and highlight different um, things that you actually found interesting. The second step is actually transferring your highlights from your Kindle or from your physical book into Obsidian. And the third step in the process is to actually processing the notes. So let's just start with the first step. So the first step is obviously to read the book. And the goal here is to isolate actually the ideas that matters to you. Because hopefully when you're picking up a book, there is a main question that you want to answer. There is something about the specific topic that you want to know more about, right? So your reading is all about isolating the ideas that will help you fill the gap in your knowledge. So most people nowadays use the Kindle. So this could be the device or the app, or if you're still using physical books, then the only thing that you have to do is you have actually to rewrite your highlights manually. As you're highlighting, you are going to rewrite the main ideas in your own words, okay? So to be completely transparent with you, sometimes I just procrastinate with this because most of the time I'm using the Kindle device, so the Kindle physical device, and if you already just took notes on this device, you just see how much of a pain it, this is. But, but usually when I'm reading on an iPhone or an iPad, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take directly notes. Okay, so great. So this is the first step. The second step, what we're going to do right now is we have to transfer actually our notes into Obsidian. So the goal here is to get what we have highlighted into Obsidian. So for that, you have different tools that you can use. You could use Readwise if you already have a subscription, or you can use a great plugin, which is called Kindle Highlight Plugin, which is free, but I would also encourage you if you're using it to just donate to his creator because it is actually a great plugin, even though it's not flawless, but it helps you get your highlights into Obsidian. So this is the second step. And once you have actually all your highlights in Obsidian, what we are going to do is we are going to start processing our highlights. And what do I mean actually processing our highlights? It is actually to isolate the ideas and connect them to what you already have into your, in your note taking system. So the easiest way for that is simply to rewrite the ideas from your highlights, trying to isolate the main concept, the main idea by simply following the rule, one note equals one idea. So the other way that you can use is to actually also regroup the ideas under the different chapter hierarchy, but we are going to dig deeper into that in just a few minutes. So with that being said, let's just jump right into Obsidian to see exactly how this workflow looks like. So here I am in Obsidian. I just wanted to share with you quickly exactly how this process looks like. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to sync my Kindle highlight notes using the plugin Kindle highlights. Um, special thank you to the person who actually developed this um, great plugin. So this is actually quite interesting. So what's happening is that it just sync automatically. So you can just, as an example here, click on sync your Kindle highlights, it will automatically sync your highlights. And then what I've actually done is I've put all the, um, the books in a specific folder. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to open the book that I'm going to work on right now. And this book is actually the book positioning from Anne Rice. So right now, as you can see, I have some highlights here. I have some annotations and what we're going to do right now, we, we are going to proceed and just to start identifying exactly what the main idea actually from the book actually is. Because 
we just picked up uh, a book and a book is actually about one main idea. So if we are able to isolate what's the important idea of the book, we are going to get, get way more clarity when it comes to processing all the little notes and just see how they add up to act, demonstrate or just find a solution to the main idea. What I also like to do is I like to rescan the table of contents on Amazon. Usually what I do, I just go to the book page and then I just take a closer look into the book again and then just see what the uh, different um, chapters are. And sometimes what I'm going to do, um, if I see that it makes sense to reorganize my notes um, using different chapters, I will do that, okay? So for this particular book, it doesn't make a lot of sense for me in order just to um, split my book summary or my um, my literal note, depending on the chapters here, because for me, they are just like big ideas. And for me, like it just makes more sense to directly put them into the note. But it really depends on the kind of books that you are um, actually reading. So. The interesting thing here, if I want to isolate the main idea of the book here, as you can see, you have the main idea here on the cover, actually. It is how to be seen and heard in an overcrowded marketplace. So, of course, you could, you could prettify this, but positioning, I'm just going to show you like the, mo the most easy way in order to, to get started. So, now I have here, what is the main idea of the book? The main idea of the book is how to position your brand in an effective way in a crowded market. So this is actually the main idea here. And this is the main question that we want to get an answer to by reading the book. Great. So now let's just pull the original um, synced file. Um, the reason why I don't like to work on directly the, the, the synced file here is that sometimes I'm just, or I'm just modifying or adding something new here. And then it just like messes up the whole, the whole thing. So I just prefer to, to, to create like my permanent book note on a separate, on a separate note here. So as you can see here, here I've had, I have right now my highlights. What is interesting is I'm going also to take the metadata, but the metadata in like how I like to use it, I like to put it on the end because it's just like metadata. It like for me, it doesn't have, make any sense to put the metadata uh, on the beginning. So right now, as you can see here, I start like, let's say with my highlights, usually what I do is I just copy paste everything here and I just put it here. So as you can see, I can, if you can leave that, like if you would like to, to work like that, but I'm not going to leave this. And here I have, let's say my highlight. Now I have my main idea and I guess we have the metadata at the end. Great. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going just to proceed highlight by highlight, see if they still make sense. And if yes, going to create a new node with this. So um, now we have here the first, um, so, so the first quote here. So the basic approach of positioning is not to create something new and different, but to, mani to manipulate what's already up there in the mind to retie the connection that already exists. Great. So what do we have here? This is like the highlight or the idea that I've gotten the note that I have taken while highlighting this. So as you can see, um, like this was like my, my thought when I, when I took the, when I, when I took this highlight, but for me, if I could rewrite this here, what I would say here is that, so positioning is to manipulate what's I, the connections that exist in your prospects mind. So as you can see here, this is quite interesting. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to use a shortcut and I'm going to create a new note with this. So now I have my new note and what I can, I can still keep like the original insight that I got and put it here. So as you can see here, I have my note with my quote and here I have like important resonant with the importance, importance of resonic with your audience. It makes me also think about another note that I have, which is thinking um, is just connecting the dots. Um, or no, it's creativity. Creativity is connecting things between them. Well, so here we see that we have a link between positioning and creativity. If I go in my creativity node, as you can see here, I have a quote from Steve Jobs, which is, Creativity is just connecting things. When you ask creative people, blah, 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 blah. Okay, great. So here we have like positioning is really it establishing a connection between what you have 
in your what your prospect has in your mind right so this is actually the basic approach great so so here we have our first note let's just go back here um, the mind as a defense against the volume of today's communication screens and rejects much of the information offered it in general the mind accepts only that which matches prior knowledge or experience so here is something interesting we see that here we have actually two ideas so the first idea is that most um, information gets rejected because as a result of being in an information overload overload okay this is interesting so this is actually the first idea that we have here and then the result of that is that the mind accepts only what matches prior knowledge or experience which means that if you want to stand out in information overload what you have to understand is that you have to establish a connection to something that is already in the prospect's minds hmm interesting so how could i re rewrite this i could just try this out if you want to if you want to stand out you have to establish a link to something or to prior knowledge knowledge or experience i'm not really satisfied by this by how i've rewritten this but i'm just going to i'm just going to use this right now and then i could still come back and then just polish it afterwards the thing is i just want to get out the big ideas right now okay great so let's just go inside this note here and just um what I like to do is like, like put how I rewrote in this here and then I have the quote here. So most information gets rejected as a result of information overload. This is interesting. I can directly put a link here to my note. Information overload. So if you want to stand out and position yourself in an effective way, you have to link your product or service to what's already in your pros prospect's mind. Okay. If you want to stand out, you have to, let's just rewrite this here. We, you have to, to link your product to what's already in your prospect's mind not sure if that's better than the than the previous title but yeah um let's just go with this and this reminds me also of empathy so let's just go with empathy here because if i know what's if if i if i can have enough empathy with my prospect well then i'm going to know what's the conversation he actually has inside his head interesting okay let's just go back here I'm just going to do a third note so to show you so that you can get actually the point here. Otherwise, this video will be too long. So let's just go to another note. Let's say this one. Okay. So here I have actually the can do the can do mentality. Yeah. What it is? It is actually in spite of hundreds of Vietnam examples to the con to, uh, to the contrary, we live in a can do environment. Yet many things are not possible no matter how hard you try. This reminds me about the hustle mentality, right? It's like you have to do it harder. You have to try harder, harder, harder. But sometimes this is just not working. So here you can see I just directly added a connection here. As you can see, they are um, different, like they are treated as different, different locations here. But all this is actually the can-do mentality. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete actually the separation that we have here. And here we have actually everything about the hustle mentality. So let's just go here. So the can do, can do mentality. Okay, I can just leave it like that. I will go here, just make it cleaner. So what is the can do mentality? So 
Um, here we have so the Uncola position. The Kendo Spear Diffuse die in many ways, blah, blah, blah. But no matter how hard we tried, no matter how many soldiers and how much money we poured in, the problem could not be solved by an outside force. So the thing is that sometimes, sometimes you have to admit that force is not, or that forcing is not the answer. You have to find a smoother and easier way to achieve your goals. That and yeah, this is just to show you how how I actually take notes, book notes in Obsidian. And what often happens is like I like to get at least the first draft where I just isolated the different ideas here. Okay, so to show you an example, book about mind management, not time management. As you can see here, I have actually used it with chapters. So chapter one, here I have the main ideas of chapter one, chapter two. So because for this book, it made way more sense. Okay. And then what's happening, you see, I still have some notes that I have to proceed here. Um, and then even like if you go into, let's say other notes, you see that um, I just made here, I just rewrote here the, the main idea, but didn't put it into the note. But yeah, this is just to show you exactly how I do it. And then um, when I go back to the notes afterwards, when I'm, when I'm thinking about something, or if I'm doing some research, this is usually when I have new ideas that I'm just continuing where I just left off. But at least right now I have the core ideas from the, from the book. I've injected them into my system and right now I can retrieve them easily with the graph view and with the backlinks. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe because I'm going to release more content like that in the future. And if you want to get three powerful tips in order to supercharge your note-taking workflow with Obsidian, don't forget to click the first link in the description to download your free PDF. And also, I'm pretty sure that YouTube has a great recommendation for you in order to continue watching another video on my channel. And with that being said, I see you in the next one.